Hi everyone, welcome to MLT MCQ and Notes. This is a third part video of important multiple choice question and answer discussion. First question, Berberi is associated with the deficiency of Option A, Vitamin D Option B, Vitamin B3 Option C, Vitamin B1 Option D, Vitamin C And the answer is Option C, Vitamin B1 Beriberi is due to the vitamin B1 deficiency, that is thiamine. Thiamine is essential for glucose metabolism. Thiamine is essential for glucose metabolism. Beriberi can affect the cardiovascular system or CNS. Then let's go through other options. Option A, vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency which causes rickets in children. Rickets in children. Uh, the condition is bones become soft and bent. Bones become soft and bent. Then second option. Option B. Vitamin B3. Vitamin B3 deficiency leads to pellagra. Vitamin B3 is niacin. Its deficiency leads to pellagra. Then vitamin C. Its deficiency is Scurvy, vitamin C deficiency. It is ascorbic acid. Its deficiency is scurvy. Second question. Bacteriophage discovered by Option A. Tot and D. Herle. Option B. Robert Koch. Option C. Edward Jenner. Option D. Ongston. And the answer is Option A. Tot and D. Herle. Bacteriophages which are viruses that infect and replicate only in bacterial cells. Bacteriophages are viruses that infect and replicate only in bacterial cell. Okay, then let's go to other options. Uh, Robert Koch, father of bacteriology. Then Edward Jenner is the father of vaccination. He invented smallpox vaccine. Edward Jenner, father of vaccination, invented smallpox vaccine. Then Ongston. Sir Alexander Ongston discovered Staphylococcus. Sir Alexander Ongston who discovered Staphylococcus. Okay. Then third question. Chronic Hepatitis B infection which serological marker indicate high infectivity. In chronic hepatitis B infection, which serological marker indicate high infectivity? Option A, HBSAG. Option B, anti HBC. Option C, anti HBS. Option D, HBE antigen. And the answer is option D, HBE antigen. HBE antigen. It is the part of core, core antigen of hepatitis B virus. It is the part of core antigen of hepatitis B virus. The presence of HBE antigen indicates that the virus is actively multiplying and highly infected. Okay. This presence indicates virus is actively multiplying and is highly infected. Okay. Then let's go through other options. HBSAG. It is hepatitis B surface antigen and serological hallmark of hepatitis B viral infection. HBS, HBS antigen appears in serum within 1 to 10 weeks. Within 1 to 10 weeks. Okay. It is the first marker of hepatitis B virus detectable in serum in acute infection. HBS antigen is the first marker of Hepatitis B virus detectable in serum in acute infection. Then other option anti HBC. It is a hepatitis B core antibody. Hepatitis B core antibody. The presence of anti HBC indicates a past or current hepatitis B infection. Its presence indicates a past or current hepatitis B infection. Then anti HBS, hepatitis B surface antibody. The presence of hepatitis B surface antibody indicates recovery and immunity from hepatitis B viral infection. 
presence of anti hbs indicates the uh, recovery and immunity from hepatitis b viral infection then fourth question all are aqueous mounting media except option a apathis media option b canada balsam option c glycerin jelly option d fructose syrup and the answer is option b canada balsam uh, all are aqueous media aqueous mounting media the canada balsam is resinous mounting media resinous mounting media another example for resinous mounting media is gum dammar gum dammar okay fifth question tumor marker for hepatocellular carcinoma option a psa option b beta hcg option c p53 option d afb and the answer is option d afb that is alpha fetoprotein uh, let's go through other options uh, psa psa is a prostate specific antigen it's an important tumor marker for prostate cancer then beta hcg it's a human chorionic gonadotropin and it's a tumor marker for testicular carcinoma tumor marker for testicular carcinoma beta hcg level levels are never found in normal men beta hcg levels never found in normal men the presence indicates malignancy presence indicates malignancy okay then p53 it's a tumor antigen that leads to somatic mutation it's a p53 is a tumor antigen it's lead that leads to somatic mutation which occur in almost all type of cancers p53 can seen in almost all type of cancers uh, then others some important tumor markers we can discuss ca15 to 3 ca15 to 3 that its presence indicate breast cancer ca15 to 3 then ca19 to 9 uh, indicate pancreatic cancer ca19 to 9 indicate pancreatic cancer CA125 that is ovarian cancer CA125 ovarian cancer CEA carcinoembryonic antigen CEA carcinoembryonic antigen uh, its presence indicate colorectal cancer CEA presence indicate colorectal cancer just note down uh, all markers very important okay then sixth question serenis test used for serenis test used for option a enterotoxigenic e coli option b entero invasive e coli option c entero hemorrhagic e coli option d entero pathogenic e coli the answer is option b entero invasive e coli what is serenis test serenis test is a test used to detect the invasiveness of invasiveness of organism it's a test used to detect the invasiveness of organism it is done by inoculating suspension of bacteria into guinea pig eye inoculating suspension of bacteria into guinea pig eye severe mucopurulent conjunctivitis and severe keratitis indicates a positive test severe mucopurulent conjunctivitis and severe keratitis indicates a positive test mice can also be used instead of guinea pig mice can also be used instead of guinea pig sereni test also done for shigella and listeria monocytogenes sereni test also used for shigella and listeria monocytogenes for its for detecting their invasiveness property okay then other options uh, uh, equally classified into two groups equally classified into two groups that is common cell strain and pathogenic strain common cell strains are uh, normal flora okay then pathogenic strain which include Uh, which are again classified into intestinal pathogenic strains and extra intestinal pathogenic strain the pathogenic strain again classified into intestinal pathogenic strain and extra intestinal pathogenic strain 
All the given options are under intestinal pathogenic strains. All the given options that is endotoxigenic E. coli, endroinvasive E. coli, endrohemorrhagic E. coli and endropathogenic E. coli. All are includes in intestinal pathogenic strains that causing diarrhea. Causing diarrhea. Then extra intestinal pathogenic strains includes newborn meningitis causing E. coli, uropathogenic E. coli, then sepsis associated E. coli. Newborn meningitis causing E. coli, uropathogenic E. coli, sepsis associated E. coli. Okay. Then seventh question. Fractional sterilization was discovered by option A. John Tindall. Option B. Joseph Lister. Option C. Ignaz Semmelvius. Option D. Louis Pasteur. The answer is option A. John Tindall. The fractional sterilization which also known as Tindallization. If the question was tindalization, we can answer it quickly. So, the question don't ask like that. Okay. Then, uh, it's a type of sterilization method that involves heating the material at 100 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes on 3 consecutive days. Tindalization is a sterilization method that involves heating the material at 100 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes on 3 consecutive days. Intermittent with the incubation at 37 degrees Celsius. Intermittent with the incubation at 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, mainly used for sterilizing foods. Then other options. Joseph Lister, who is the father of antiseptic surgery. Joseph Lister, he is the father of antiseptic surgery. Then Ignaz Semmelwis, he invent hand washing technique. Ignaz Semmelwis invent hand washing technique. Its, important, its importance has increased with the arrival of Corona. Okay. Uh, then Louis Pasteur, father of modern microbiology. Father of Modern Microbiology. Then 8th question. Which of the following is not a component of Garrett Tetrad? Which of the following is not a component of Garrett Tetrad? Option A. Albinism. Option B. Pendosuria. Option C. Alcoptinuria. Option D. Fructose Intolerance. The answer is Option D. Fructose Intolerance. What is Garrett Tetrad? Garrett Tetrad is a term named for British physician Archibald Garrett who invented inborn errors of metabolism. Okay. Garrett Tetrad comprises four inherited metabolic disorders which include albinism, essential pendosuria, alkaptonuria, then cystinuria. Okay. It includes albinism, essential pendosuria, alkaptonuria, then cystinuria. Okay. The ninth question. Mercury containing fixatives are all except. Option A. Zengas fluid. Option B. Helles fluid. Option C. Genders fluid. Option D. B5 fixative. The answer is option C. Genders fluid. Genders fluid is a picric acid containing fixative. Others are mercury containing fixative and genders fluid is a picric acid containing fixative. Boyne's fluid and Rossmann's fluids are also example for picric acid containing fixatives. Boyne's fluid and Rossmann's fluid. Okay. Then 10th question. Confirmatory test for diabetes mellitus. Confirmatory test for diabetes mellitus. Option A, GCT. Option B, OGTT. Option C, HbA1c. Option D, FBS. The answer is option B, OGTT. OGTT that is oral glucose tolerance test. OGTT is the confirmatory test for diabetes mellitus. Uh, here the glucose low dose is 75 gram anhydrous glucose in 250 to 300 ml of water. As per current WHO recommendation, three samples are collected. Uh, first, fasting sample, that is zero hour sample, uh, blood and urine. Then after one hour and after two hour post glucose load. Okay. 
then urine samples may also be collected along with these samples. A 2 hour GTT value over 200 mg per deciliter is confirmed a case of diabetes mellitus. Greater than 200 mg per deciliter is confirmed a case of glucose tolerance test that is diabetes mellitus. Okay. Uh, Moving to other options, GCT that is glucose challenging test, confirmatory test for detection of gestational diabetes, confirmatory test for detection of gestational diabetes. Here 50 gram glucose given orally, after 2 hours sample is collected, then value greater than 140 mg per deciliter indicates gestational diabetes mellitus. Okay. Then HbA1c, glycated hemoglobin, also known as glucose memory test. It's a glucose memory test. Uh, give information about glycemic control over the last 120 days. HbA1c give information about glycemic control over the last 120 days. Then FBS, fasting blood sugar for detecting diabetes. At least two times FBS should be greater than 126 mg per deciliter. For detecting diabetes, FBS should be greater than 126 mg per deciliter at least two times. Okay.